So today we'll be talking about a disease called named Hashimoto thyroiditis and there are a lot of diseases in pathology or in the world of medicine which we read which carries a name of and legacy of a Japanese physician and scientist and this one also carries the legacy of a Dr. Hakaru Hashimoto who described this in 1912 and he is an such an iconic figure in Japan that even Japan Thyroid Association to honor him carries his image as a logo of Japanese Thyroid Association. Now there are uh, other diseases also like uh, you read uh, Kikuchi's lymphadenitis in the lymph node pathology, you read about uh, uh, Takasu's arteritis in the vasculitis, Kawasaki's disease in the vasculitis but those diseases we will be discussing later. Let's today concentrate on Hashimoto thyroiditis. Now Hashimoto thyroiditis, uh, the first thing that you need to know that this is the most common cause of hypothyroidism in the iodine sufficient part of the world. That means if you are, there's no iodine deficiency and you are having hypothyroidism, patient of hypothyroidism, the first thing that you need to put on the list of your differential diagnosis is Hashimoto thyroiditis. Second important point that this is an autoimmune disorder and like any other autoimmune disorder, they always come in groups. So if you have a patient who is having Hashimoto thyroiditis, there's also increased risk that uh, the patient will be also having other autoimmune disorders like uh, myasthenia gravis, like vitiligo, like primary biliary cirrhosis, like SLE. So all these kind of diseases, they usually tend to come together, the autoimmune group of diseases. The next point that I would like to mention about the Hashimoto's thyroid is that basically there is a progressive thyroid destruction occurs by B and T lymphocyte, primarily by T lymphocyte mediated process cytotoxic T lymphocytes uh, and what actually happens in uh, Hashimoto's thyroid is that one day suddenly uh, the lymphocytes start to, to think that these the, our body's immune system they start to think that the thyroid tissues thyroid follicular cells follicles they are foreign and they start to attack them and they progressively destroy one follicle after another and you know the follicles are basically the storehouses for the colloid they, they they carry the they store the thyroid hormone so if one follicle after another they are getting destroyed and they get replaced by the lymphocyte infiltration what is going to happen that uh, very soon you would be having a severe hypothyroidism because there will be no follicles left not much follicles left within your thyroid and another point that I would like to mention here that initial state that they usually present with a hypothyroidism progressive hypothyroidism initial state there could be hyperthyroidism at that stage when initially when a lot of follicles are getting destroyed and their contents are coming into the circulation this state is called Hasi toxicosis Hasi toxicosis means uh, you can break this word into two halves Hashimoto thyroid Hashimoto thyroiditis plus thyrotoxicosis so Hasi is Hasi and thyrotoxicosis toxicosis both the things together is Hasi toxicosis it means basically a hyperthyroid state which can be seen at the initial stage of the uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis but eventually they are going to become hypothyroid and there will be a persistent and severe uh, hypothyroidism in cases of them. Now coming when we look at the, the involvement of the thyroid in cases of Hashimoto's thyroiditis they always involve the whole organ thyroid organ diffusely and there is another uh, important wisdom or pearl that I would like to mention that if you are looking at a thyroid pathology and the thyroid pathology is involving the whole thyroid entirely then primarily think about two things one is inflammation of the thyroid thyroiditis or hyperplasia of the thyroid and if the there is a presence with a thyroid pathology is present with a palpable nodule or node means some kind of bulging localized bulging then the first thing that you should think is uh, some kind of benign or neoplasm uh, malignant neoplasm and also sometimes hyperplasia could also present with nodules but uh, if there is a diffuse involvement of the whole thyroid the first thing we usually think is uh, thyroiditis and some kind of hyperplasia now when we look at the first in the best in pathological investigation we usually do is FNSC and FNSC the thing that that catches our attention is that there is a very scant amount of colloid present in the aspiration because normally when you we poke the needle in uh, while doing the FNSC in the thyroid there will be a lot of 
colloid come out and the colloid will be mixed with the blood and that gives a color kind of brownish color but in this case there, there is not much colloid left because all the follicles have been destroyed in the Hashimoto's thyroid so mostly what you'll be getting you'll be getting blood coming out and when you examine them you'll be seeing lots of lymphocyte because what has happened in the thyroid that the whole thyroid has been destroyed uh, the follicles have been destroyed and that have been replaced by formation of lymph by lymphocytic infiltration and formation of the germinal center so now not much follicles are left in the thyroid there are only lots of lots of tons of lymphocytes are there and they are sometimes forming germinal center another characteristic feature is seen that is called heartless cell what is heartless cell i would explain it in next 30 seconds heartless cell is basically a metaplastic response of the thyroid follicular epithelium when the thyroid follicular epitheliums are getting attacked what is follicular epithelium the epithelium which is lining the thyroid follicles we call them follicular epithelium in the thyroid follicular epitheliums get progressively attacked uh, by this lymphocytic the stress occur then they change into a new kind of epithelium there's a metaplastic change actually we call that heartless cell and heartless cell has uh, eosinophilic cytoplasm densely eosinophilic cytoplasm and if you look at them microscopically there will be a lot of electron microscopically there will be a lot of mitochondria present inside their cytoplasm uh, and the next point that we would like to mention that obviously this disease would be having uh, certain autoantibodies like anti-TPO antibodies, anti-thyroglobulin antibodies. These things would help in the diagnosis. And the last point that I would like to mention about the Hashimoto's thyroid, which is very important, that Hashimoto's thyroid carries a risk for certain cancers, uh, particularly non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, so diffuse DLBCL, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma or marginal B-cell lymphoma. These lymphomas can develop in the backdrop of Hashimoto's thyroid. So, if a lady is having Hashimoto's thyroid for last 20 years, he, she was diagnosed at the age of 45 and now he's around 65, 70 and now there is a progressive enlargement of the thyroid gland and it is causing infiltration into the surrounding tissues, causing respiratory distress, causing dyspnea. This kind of presentation is occurring, you need to be alarmed. Probably that Hashimoto's thyroid has converted into some kind of cancer but this is not occurring in all the cases this is quite uncommon actually this is not very commonly seen and there are some other cancers which are also can be seen in the Hashimoto's thyroid uh, those there are two other cancers I would like to mention is a plasma cytoma and a sclerosing variant of mucoepidermoid carcinoma so all in all uh, if I summarize what I told you that uh, if we look at the thyroid pathology if there is a diffuse involvement of the thyroid the whole thyroid is symmetrically or asymmetrically enlarged but this they are diffusely enlarged then we have to think about two things one is thyroid deitis or thyroid hyperplasia in this case uh, there will be symmetrical enlargement typically in the Hashimoto's thyroid is but if the whole thyroid is enlarged you have to think about thyroiditis inflammation of thyroid or thyroid hyperplasia and if you have it's presently as a nodule please keep in mind uh, about keep in mind the thyroid neoplasm there is a benign or neoplasm malignant neoplasms this is a very important point i would like to mention then the other key points are that this is a typical autoimmune disorder there's a progressive autoimmune mediated destruction of the thyroid gland which results initially there could be a state of hyperthyroidism we call it Hasi toxicosis but eventually there will be a uh, permanent state of hypothyroidism uh, and as this disease was described by Dr. Has Hakaru Hashimoto this disease got this name Hashimoto's thyroiditis we can also call it chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis and when we look at FNSC the, the key characteristic features we see a very scant amount of colloid or absent colloid and tons and tons of uh, lymphocyte because most of the follicles get replaced and destroyed by lymphocytic infiltration and they get filled with uh, and the whole thyroid basically gets replaced by severe infiltration severe lymphocytic infiltration with formation of sometimes germinal center also and they carry some risk for cancers like uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma like mucoepidermal carcinoma and plasma thyroid so this is basically the key points in a nutshell.